Moving on now, Antarctic researchers say thousands of baby emperor penguins drowned last year as the sea ice underneath the chicks melted and broke apart before they could develop the waterproof feathers that they need to swim in the ocean. For more on this, joining us live is Dr Barbara V. Necker, a senior research scientist at the Australian Antarctic Division. She's made dozens of visits to emperor penguin colonies. Thank you for your time, Doctor. These emperor penguins, I mean, we'll show some pictures to our viewers. They are so cute, so fluffy, so small. It's absolutely heartbreaking to learn that they're dying in droves. How many deaths in Antarctica are we talking about here and why is this happening? Thank you very much for the introduction, Ashley. Yes, look, it is an absolutely devastating situation, something that unfortunately we have been um, expecting in some ways for, for, quite some num for quite a number of years. Look, emperor penguins are superb divers and marvellously adapted to both life at sea as well as in the Antarctica. But the little pumpkins, the little beautiful, perfect grey fluff balls that you see here, um, it takes them nearly five months from the time they hatch to the time that they finally leave the colony, that they grow feathers which enable them to protect themselves, for, or to protect them from this very, very harsh environment. What is happening at the moment is particularly near the Antarctic Peninsula, which is the bit that is sort of stretching towards South America, is um, it is and has been for a number of years now one of the warmest regions and most quickly warming regions in Antarctica. So sea ice obviously doesn't thrive particularly well in warm waters. And uh, what we are beginning to see is that there is less and less fast ice where the penguins set up their colonies. And um, what is also concerning is that the quality of the ice seems to be deteriorating due to the influx of, of warm water. And um, unfortunately, the, um, the, the timing of these ice breakouts is really, really bad. Usually, a colony needs to persist until at least, say, mid to late December, preferably even a little bit longer, because emperor penguins are not all that synchronized. You know, they do everything roughly over a stretch of about six weeks. So some of the chicks um, are better off when um, when they hatch early. However, what happened at the peninsula last year was really, really unprecedented. We have never seen that um, several colonies were affected at the same time by the same phenomenon, which means that the fast ice, this stretch of ice that is attached to land, simply disappeared. And it it's difficult from satellite imagery to get a, an idea of the quality of the ice, but for something like that to happen, um, A, there must have been warm water, there possibly were some storms involved, but the ice probably was also not as thick as it has been in the past. So when you look at those satellite images, what does it tell us about the rate at which this is happening? Because as I understand it, we're talking about areas of sea ice that is usually pretty stable, but is now breaking up. Is that correct? That's true. Look, we're talking about two different lots of, of uh, sea ice. Sea ice is anything that sits on top of the frozen ocean, or it's frozen on top of the ocean. Um, where we are here is the fast ice. That is a relatively, usually a relatively large extended area, um, relatively solid, sometimes only a couple of meters thick. And to the north of it is the pack ice, which is all, always highly dynamic. Now, um, that's where the big ice flows are drifting around and there's a lot of open water in between. Now, what seems to be happening is, and satellite imagery goes back quite some time, so we actually have a reasonable idea of the history of the um, sea ice formation, of particularly the fast ice formation in, in certain areas. And it's, it appears to be, in some areas at least, to form later and it disappears quicker or sooner. So the entire breeding cycle of emperor penguins, which usually lasts, say, from about April onwards until late December, early February, just does not fit with the timing of the ice duration anymore. The ice simply isn't there for the entire length of time, and that is seriously concerning. So, Barbara, what does that mean then for the future of these penguins? I mean, are we are we looking at them becoming extinct? Is that where this is heading? 
that is pretty much where it's heading. I mean, quite a number of modeling papers were published or have been published in the in the past few years where people tried to consider various factors and um, also did take an Antarctica-wide approach. And the worrying thing really is that we are now beginning to see changes, not just near the Antarctic Peninsula. If, if it were the only reason where things change, you would think, okay, well, we may lose a few colonies. The adults are going to continue to survive because their plumage is already waterproof. They know how to survive out there. They may be able to shift to other areas. But we are now beginning to see that the ocean right around the Antarctic continent is beginning to warm. And that means that it really is becoming quite a challenge for these birds to find sea ice that is suitable for them for, um, as I said, the, the time that they require. So a number of papers have predicted that probably by 2050, quite a number of colonies are going to be in serious strife. And um, in a few more decades, up to 90% of them would become quasi extinct, which means that there would have been such dramatic losses that uh, there are simply not enough birds anymore to maintain a population.